Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game DC deck building game Dark Knight's Metal. This was sent to me by Cryptozoic Entertainment and is designed by... Matt Hyra, Matt Dunn, Ben Stoll, and Nathaniel Yamaguchi. Batman has discovered a dark multiverse and unleashed evil versions of himself upon our world. The Justice League must band together to defeat Barbados, the Batman who laughs, and their Dark Knights. One superhero won't be enough to overcome these challenges. You'll need to save Batman and other captured superheroes and recruit them to your team to save the multiverse. Okay. So I've gone over the original DC deck building game, uh, and that's in episode 15. Go watch that for like the basic ideas of how to play. Uh, I'm not going to go into the basic rules again, just what's different about this one, because I've already covered the DC deck building game and other versions, like the Attack on Titan one. This is just another version, so I'm going to show you what is unique about this set. So the basic idea of uh, using power to buy cards and add them to your deck, all that is pretty much the same. But what's different about this one is first off we've got the Batman who laughs. Uh, he's got a condition, I'll get into this a little bit later, but he captures uh, superheroes and he actually starts the game with Batman captured. ruh -roh. So I'll get into that in a second. Otherwise, very similar setup. You've got your line up here where you can you know buy cards from a deck uh we have um new breakthrough cards i'll get through that in a second uh we also have weakness cards um these are a little bit different as well and your super villain stack uh, which are you gonna fight them uh to try to progress through the game uh, but let's go over the key differences between uh, uh this version of the game and the original First off, let's go over these weakness cards, and these are a doozy in this game. In the original game, they just kind of clog up your deck, but in this game, they can disrupt your turn. Uh, weakness cards, if you have them in your hand, you have to play them before playing other cards or ending your turn. If you ever play two weakness cards, or basically control them or play them, you put one of them in your score pile permanently and return the other to the stack, one of your characters, meaning your superhero, becomes captured, and your turn just ends. So if you have two of these in your hand, you play them first, you don't even get to have a turn. That's how ruthless these weakness cards are. If a superhero is captured, uh, they go underneath the Batman Who Laughs, and now I have two! Ooh. Now, even though the Batman Who Laughs is capturing uh, superheroes left and right, what's unique about this game is that you can actually control multiple superheroes that's why we have this stack here of, of superhero cards um so here we got cyborg um let's say i controlled cyborg but then i play some cards in the game will let you uh recruit another character which in this case then you have both abilities in play cyborgs uh once during each of your turns plus one power for each metal card you control and the flash uh once during each of your turns when you play a defense draw a card uh, so yeah, you can just keep on stacking those abilities, but if they get captured, you lose the ability, and it goes underneath the Batman who laughs. Now, in this game, the supervillain cards uh, don't go into your deck when you beat them. They just give you rewards when you buy them. So this guy, the murder machine, he's 9 power. If you can spend 9 power, you'll get a reward, which is destroy up to 2 cards you control. And then, anytime you defeat a supervillain... Uh, with cost 13 or less, you can then rescue one of the superheroes underneath the Batman Who Laughs. So let's say I want to take... Eh, I'll keep Superman here. I'll take Batman. Uh, each time you play a weakness, look at the top card of your deck. Destroy it or leave it. And now, he's added to my little league of heroes I have here. Um, however, then you have to gain two weakness cards and add them to your discard pile. Now, if at any time there are no captured characters underneath the Batman Who Laughs... You take the top uh, card of the hero deck, and now Dr. Fate is captured. But in this case, eh, let's just say they're both captured for now. Um, but he always has some hero in his captivity. Whenever you recruit a superhero, you look at the top two cards uh, of the deck, and then you choose... Oh, well, there's Deathstroke, but he's a promo. Uh, you choose one uh, and put it in front of you. The other one goes back on the bottom of the stack. So let's say I take Plastic Man. Uh, once during each of your turns, you may have the next card you play gain a type or a subtype of your choice until the end of your turn, which is pretty useful for combos. Um, and then this guy would go back underneath the deck. 
This game also features now new breakthrough cards. These are different than kicks. Uh, they are plus two power and you may return this card to the stack if you do destroy a weakness or vulnerability card you control. Uh, which that's pretty useful because weaknesses are very, very troublesome in this game. Those are always available for purchase. And let's get into these metal cards. See these nice foil cards here, like Lady Blackhawk? Uh, she is a metal card, which is written here. Um, plus two power. If you play or have played a hero or another metal card this turn, additional plus one power. So going back to Cyborg's thing, again, he, uh, he gets plus one power for each metal card you control. So not only are these nice to look at with their foil, but they actually have relevant powers that they can combo off each other, depending on if you have metal cards or not. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Uh, you're, it's just kind of like a harder version of the game with, uh, but you can have multiple superheroes, but they keep getting captured. Uh, and yeah, um, I don't want to go through these because I think these are kind of like a fun surprise to go through the supervillains, but I'll go through some of the other uh, heroes in this because uh, there's a lot of them. Um, we got uh, Superman. Uh, it requires three weakness cards for your characters to become captured. Um, each time you play a weakness, plus one power. Dr. Fate. Once during each of your turns, if you control two or more heroes and our equipment, put, put up to three cards with cost zero from your discard pile into your hand. Wonder Woman. Once during each of your turns, if you control two or more equipment and or superpowers, draw two cards, then discard two cards. We got, this is a promo, uh, so it, you may not have this in your game. Kendra Saunders, once during each of your turns, if you control two or more villains and or heroes, plus two power. Hal Jordan, the second time you buy or gain a card from the lineup during each of your turns, you may destroy a starter you control. Mr. Terrific, once during each of your turns, you may gain a weakness and put it into your hand if you do draw two cards. And Aquaman, once during each of your turns, if you control two or more villains and or superpowers, plus one power, and you may put cards you gain this turn on top of your deck. Now, that's a lot of abilities, and those can stack, basically. Like, if you have multiple heroes, you get all those benefits, which can lead to some pretty crazy combos. Um, and let's just kind of go through some of the new cards. Like, I went over Lady Blackhawk. Here's Steel, another metal card. Just draw a card, plus one power for each equipment, and our other metal card you play or have played this turn. Here's another metal card, Electrum. Put a hero, villain, or metal card in your discard pile into your hand. Dionysium, plus two power. If you play or have played a superpower or another metal card this turn, you may destroy a card in your hand or discard pile. So yeah, that's a look at some of the metal cards. Uh, they all have different abilities and such, but obviously part of the fun is discovering them on your own. So I'm not going to go through too many of them. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. Uh, this uh, goofy motherfucker is uh, stealing heroes. You're trying to get, get them back and recruit them to your squad. And buying these cards, including these new metal, shiny metal cards, and building up your deck as usual, and beating up supervillains. And that's pretty much it. I had a lot of fun with this set, uh, even if the theme to me is very edgelord. Uh, this is definitely a meme set, though, in terms of gameplay. And if you don't like confrontation in your deck building game, maybe try another set, because this one is really about fucking over your opponents. Uh, the weakness cards in this are much more brutal in this, uh, versus the original game, which I actually like. Uh, launching those weakness cards into your opponent's deck and forcing them to end their turns is really satisfying, but it's super mean. So again, if you don't like that confrontation, it's rough. Uh, one of my favorite parts of this set is actually the fact that you can control multiple superheroes, which can be a little overwhelming, but it's also very satisfying to pull combos off. Uh, using all your special abilities on your turn to their maximum efficiency is a lot of fun. Really, one thing about this set is that the superhero abilities and the cards feel a little maybe too powerful, and the supervillains in comparison felt actually kind of easy to beat for me. Uh, I felt like we kind of blazed through that villain deck very quickly, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It keeps the game short, but it did feel like the combination of cards and abilities in this set led to very high power totals pretty early on as compared to my experience like with other versions of the game. The breakthrough cards are a nice change of pace from kicks. They're way more useful and essential because the weaknesses are so brutal in this. Uh, the metal cards are nice, you know, I love foil cards and I, you know, I think it's fun that they have little combo effects with each other. I did feel like the Batman who laughs as a concept was a little underwhelming. I was expecting him to be feel more of like a tricky enemy, but instead he's just kind of like a superhero bank of like, Yes, I'll hold Batman here until you get him later. Yeah, okay. 
I mean, yeah, he throws weaknesses in your discard piles, but otherwise, eh, you know, it didn't feel super like, oh man, he's a big threat or anything like that. So this was a lot of fun. If you're a fan of the DC deck building game or the Cerberus system in general, I think this is a very enjoyable set. It's definitely meaner, the cards swing pretty hard, but I personally like both of those things. Uh, this also could work if you're new, like, it's just slightly more complicated than the base game. It just adds more... Really, I think the maybe the most overwhelming thing might be that you have multiple hero powers. But other than that, it's, it's pretty accessible. So uh, you could jump into this one if you really like that theme. But yeah, it's good. Another solid uh, entry in the Cerberus system.